Uh, hello everyone. I'll be presenting the work diversity driven attention model for query based abstractive summarization. So let's begin with uh, what uh, summarization is. So summarization actually has two paradigms, extractive versus abstractive summarization. So given a document, the extractive summarization will generally extract the salient points from the document itself, uh, salient points, phrases, sentences, etc. Et and just list those uh, as a summary. Whereas abstractive summarization, okay. uh, whereas abstractive summarization has a generation component to it, so it uh, it doesn't have these constraint which uh, extractive summarization has, and uh, thus it will be able to generate a stronger summary. So what query based abstractive summarization is. Now let's say we have been given this document. If I will ask you to summarize this document, you will definitely cover all the salient points in all the paragraphs and sentences and try to generate a summary. But let's say I give you a context and then ask you to summarize the document based on that context. So the summary here should focus more on the first part of the document which has the relevant context rather than the second one. Uh, for the and if the query changes or the context changes, uh, then your summary will also change uh, based on the query. So uh, the task of summarization could be seen in terms of encoder decoder paradigm. So I'll just quickly recap through attention mechanism and then we'll go to the proposed solution. So let's say we have been given a source document. Roger Federer wins a record eighth men's singles title at Wimbledon on Sunday. Now the task of the encoder is to uh, generate one fixed size vector representation for this whole document. And then the decoder will take over from here and it will generate one word at a summary, one, by, uh, one word at a time from that single fixed size vector representation. So the problem with these models is that as uh, the length of the source document increases. The task of encoder gets more difficult to summarize the whole document into that one single fixed size vector. So that's why the performance of uh, the natural language generation task decreases with the increase in the source length. So one solution for this is attention mechanisms, where <coughs> the decoder will decide on which part of the document it has to pay attention to while generating the next word. So let's say it has already generated the word Roger. So now we will feed in this decoder state to the attention mechanism, which will then compute, OK, that we, I have to pay attention on the first part of the document, which is Roger Federer uh, wins. And then that context representation will be then passed to the decoder again to generate the next word. So the key point to note here is that the, uh, the representation of the document or the context vector changes at each decoder time step. But still, these models have one more uh, problem, that is the repeating phrase problem. So this is one example from machine translation. So here you can see that the candidate summary has word McDonald's being repeated uh, thrice. And the other phrase, minimum wage of $15, is again being repeated. So the work that we have proposed solves uh, the repeating phrase problems in some way. So <coughs> one of the key intuition that why there is a repeating phrase, phrase problem in the generated summary or the target is that the decoder state is pretty similar at two consecutive time steps. One, so we could s uh, say that uh, since the context vector that are being fed to the decoder at different time steps are similar, that's why the words that are generated are similar. So one uh, solution could be that while feeding in the context vector, you make it orthogonal to the previous time step, thus ensuring that the new context vector that is being fed to decoder at time t is uh, orthogonal to the one which was fed at time step t minus 1. Thus, uh, 
this constraint will follow. And uh, the point to note here is that dt need not be orthogonal to dt minus 2. But this might not be the case. So this solution could solve the problem of the repeating phrase McDonald's, but it might fail to solve the problem of minimum wage of eight, uh, $15 as the uh, context that is being repeated was way back in time. So to account for the history, we have uh, modified the LSTM cell where uh, most of the equations are, uh, uh, are the same as the basic LSTM cell except that the uh, vector that, uh, <coughs> sorry, the vector that influences the output of the LSTM cell is orthogonal to the history of the LSTM cell. So the equation in red will ensure that. So in this way, as we have introduced the LSTM cell, we are also ensuring the history is taken into account. But uh, again, uh, since the two solutions that we proposed had a hard orthogonality constraint that at each time step, we were making it uh, orthogonal uh, to the previous time steps or the history. But this might not be the case if we are trying to generate a phrase say Lord of the Rings. So for these four time steps, the context vector should have been similar and not orthogonal. So to account for that, we have introduced a gamma parameter, which is kind of a gate uh, as there in the LSTM cells, which will decide how much component you have to subtract uh, of the previous time step or the history. So thus, uh, this gives model more power. So basically, the, uh, to summarize the model itself uh, for repeating phrase, now you have a diversity cell sitting on top of a tension mechanism, which, uh, which will then send the uh, correct context vector to the decoder. Coming back to the task of query-based abstractive summarization, so we will try and solve the repeating phrase problem for query-based abstractive summarization. Okay, so let's say we have been given this document. So previously, if you would have noticed, the summary was Roger Federer won the Wimbledon. But now I have given the query margin of victory. And for query also, we have a bidirectional GRU, which will encode the query. And then the summary should be generated Federer won in straight. So we have a tension mechanism sitting on top of query uh, embeddings. And we have a document attention. Now, uh, the thing to note here is that the query embedding is again fed to the document attention so that the relevant context uh, to the query is basically retrieved from the document, in, uh, document. And then you have a diversity cell which will ensure that there are no repetitions. And this happen at each time step of the decoder. Yeah, so it was straight sets. Okay, the other problem that we came across was that uh, for query based abstractive summarization, there were not any significant data sets. As you can see, there are many data sets for abstractive summarization and one for query based extractive summarization, but nothing for abstractive summarization in context of query as such. So for this, we created a new data set by crawling the Debatepedia website. The Debatepedia website has around 663 debates listed in 53 categories. And each debate has around uh, some arguments, some questions attached to it. So this is a, uh, one of the debates uh, where the query is, does algae biofuel take up too much land? And the uh, points there are documents. And the blue highlighted text has been taken as the summary. So we have ex extracted around 12,695 points uh, from this uh, data set. Uh, sorry, debate PDF site, and uh, we have split it into 80, 10, 10 percent, uh, and did a 10 fold cross validation on this data set. So, so coming to the experimental results, so I'll just tell what all models are. So, vanilla at, at encode, attend, decode is the basic sequence to sequence model with attention mechanism. Query encode will uh, bring in the component of query. Query attention has the attention mechanism on top of query. B1 is basically uh, the repeating phrase model, but B1 is uh, here is the basic LSTM cell instead of diversity LSTM cell. 
we had this model to account for whether the LSTM cell was uh, uh, helping or uh, the diversity uh, LSTM cell was uh, important. M1 and M2 are uh, the two baselines that solve uh, the uh, repeating phrase prob problem for abstractive summarization context. We modified these baselines to account for query based abstractive summarization. And D1, SD1, uh, D2, SD2 we have already listed and discussed. So the model that performed the best was LS, uh, diversity LSTM cell with the soft constraint, which outperformed all the other models. So some of the examples uh, have been listed in paper also and here. So you can see that the phrase hydrogen is being repeated if the diversity LSTM cell is not there. But as we uh, bring in the diversity component, the repetitions are not there. And then there is one more example where we expected the model to repeat and our model is successfully able to do so, uh, thus repeating uh, the word treated. So the key contributions of this paper is one is the diversity based attention mechanism which is just not restricted to a, uh, query based abstractive summarization. It could also be applied to different NLG tasks and the other is data set for query based uh, abstractive summarization. So in future work we will try and uh, uh, experiment more with the, di uh, the diversity cell or the diversity component for different NLG tasks. Yeah, so that's it. Thanks for the great talk. So um, you created this data set uh, by extracting sentences from the documents. Did I get it right or? Uh, no. And you're, so you're testing it on an abstractive summarization? Uh, uh, no, so basically here the black uh, text is taken as the document and the blue text is the summary. So, there so how are the summaries generated? The summaries. How These are summaries are there in the debate media website. They are. So okay. We haven't generated. Got we've it. just crawled the data set. Got so it. How big was this data set again? Uh, we ha we crawled around 12,695 points. Uh, the data set is not that big, but yeah. we saw a trend there, and so. And compared to doc data sets, for instance, that yeah. most of us know, yes. which are a little bit different than the CNN and the mail data set. Yes. Uh, are these more expressed, like the abstracts are longer or shorter, you would say? Uh, no, no, these are definitely shorter summaries, yeah. but the thing was that those uh, data sets are not explicitly designed for query-based abstractive summarization. Yes. So okay. that's why we crawled this and got it. Yeah. Okay, thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Hi, thank you. So I have a question that comes more from uh, the enterprise set. So let's say you have uh, a specific query that's actually similar, but what really changes is your documents, right? So I'm thinking about in business when you have um, uh, a lot of the summarization comes across, the people are asking the same exact question, it's just that the underlying documents are changing in some way. Does that change the, uh, uh, does that change, how would that change this? Does this make it an easier problem or does that make it a harder problem? Uh, sorry, but I didn't get your question right. Uh, so, so my question is, if you have, uh, if your query stays the same, okay. but your underlying document set, right, yes. is, is the thing that's changing, right? Yeah. Does that actually change, does that make it an easier problem? Does that make it a harder problem or does it not have an effect no, so on the problem? No, so actually here we had, uh, the queries were not that much, but the documents related to one query were like one query had around four to five documents associated with those. So the algorithm point of view won't change. I, uh, we could still try this model on okay. that. Okay, yeah. all right, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Hi, so uh, thanks for your nice work. And uh, I've got one question about uh, the evaluation. So you evaluate use the Roche score. Yes. And uh, 
do you do the like um, do do you like evaluate how much repetitive uh, phrases you uh, it generate yes, that compared to the we did that but business. we haven't reported on the in paper I yeah. calculated okay. the bigram repetitions so in query encode it was around three thousand something uh, I don't remember the exact number but yeah it fairly reduced for the diversity cell it was around 200 300 I didn't report it because again we were just computing it for uh, bigram so I thought it's not Okay. Because viewing which phrases are uh, repeated is itself a pretty different task because uh, this could also handle the if the paraphrases are being repeated. But uh, yeah, so that's why we didn't. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. no problem.